Hey guys, it's Sam and in this video I just want to show you guys a really quick way to add just a bit or a lot, I guess depends on your taste, skin texture to your portraits. I'm using Photoshop but most digital programs nowadays have similar features or settings or something, so don't feel like you need Photoshop to be able to do this. So what you're seeing on screen is a very messy portrait. <laughs> I drew this as part of my daily 30 minute portrait challenge for January. If you'd like to know more about that, you can check out my video talking about it over here where I go more in detail about drawing portraits every day in 30 minutes, and this is just one of them. So I wanted to use it as a base example to kind of show you what this technique is. That doesn't mean that your portrait has to be like super sketchy messy to use this. You can use this in any style of portrait, and this method works for a lot more than just skin texture. For example, this portrait, I used it, it's kind of messy, but I used it just to kind of show the age of the person, get a little bit of skin blemishes in there. So I used that during, this is another 30 minute portrait. Uh, this was another 30 minute portrait where I used it for his facial hair. So the uh, hair coming down the side of his face and the mustache, all of that is using the same technique. So don't feel like this is just a skin texture tutorial. This can be used in a whole bunch of things. So I'm going to take a moment just to kind of clean her up just a touch and then we can get into the tutorial. So be right back. When you only have 30 minutes, this stuff gets really nitpicky <laughs> after you're done. I just wanted to look a little bit nicer for this tutorial. Okay, so I just kind of cleaned up the edges a little bit. Let's get into the tutorial. So what you'll need is a new layer. So if you're doing a 30 minute challenge, this is actually really great because this is very helpful if you want to get some really quick textures like I did with the beard and with the skin. You can work on the same layer, but it gives you a little bit more control to use a different layer. I'll be using just the normal hard round because that's probably what most people are going to be uh, using, but this works with any brush. And in fact, you can get a lot of different styles and a lot of different effects with different brushes. So don't feel like you need to use the hard round. A lot of this is kind of, you can tinker it and do whatever with it. There's no set rules when it comes to this. So in Photoshop specifically, uh, there's brush settings up here. You're going to want to go down to scattering. I like to do both axes because I think that just looks a little bit nicer and increase the scattering just a little bit. This is completely optional. By the way, before I get going, you don't need a tablet to do this. If you are a mouse user or you just prefer using the mouse, this tutorial works for you as well. So you're welcome. <laughs> so you can kind of play around with how much scattering you want. It's very personal preference. It also depends on the size of your canvas. So if you're working on a smaller canvas, you're probably going to want less scattering. Working on a larger canvas, you might want more. But also keep in mind, um, at least in Photoshop, it kind of will slow things down a little bit. So just a heads up if you don't have the super bestest computer ever out there. <laughs> if you want to push the distance a little more, you can go up to brush tip shape and you can increase the spacing. So what I'm doing is sort of thinking about the pores, the sort of indents in our skin, that sort of stuff. So these dots are essentially going to be the pores of the skin, or you can make it be freckles, you can make it be blemishes, you can make it be a mustache and beard. <laughs> so what you're going to get just with these settings alone is you're going to get something like this. So it looks a little bit like snow. Spoilers, you can also use this with snow. <laughs> so if you want to be really subtle about it, what I like to do is sort of color pick, and then you can sort of play around with the size and the opacity. I might want a little bit more scattering. Again, it's a little bit trial and error. You get more used to it as you go. So this looks pretty bold. Uh, right now, if I just paint it like this, you can help that by changing the opacity, sort of lowering it down to make it a little less in your face, a little bit more subtle. If you want it punchy, you know, you can keep it at 100%. Depends on the style and your interests. Uh, if you want it a little bit more subtle, you can sort of lower the opacity. I try not to overdo it when I do this <laughs> technique, just because I feel like it gets a little bit much. Sometimes you can sort of overdo it to the point where it's like, oh my god, what is happening? There's this texture everywhere. Again, depends on style, depends on uh, your interests. And if you screw up, you can always undo, erase if you're working digitally. And uh, if your program allows it, you can use masks. I'll get to that in a second.
So what I like to do is kind of work in with the highlights and sort of color pick from the highlights, color pick in the shadows. Just use things that are already there. Your portrait doesn't need to be in color. You can do this in black and white as well. This is one way you can do it is to color pick and sort of paint it down. I'll show you another way in a second. But just to kind of get the general idea down, it's really subtle. It adds just that little touch that nobody really thinks about or nobody would really notice. But it's kind of like, you know, you do that 80% and it's that last 20% that makes the biggest difference. So here's just a quick example. And if you want to kind of have a little bit more control over what you're doing without erasing, you can use masks. That's this little like flag down at the bottom, kind of like a Japan flag down at the bottom. Um, if you click that, you can now paint in grayscale and black will make things invisible. And the more white you go, the more visible it is. So since everything on the layer right now is visible, this, uh, little box is completely white, but if I make it completely black, it's as if I turned off the layer and no matter what I do to turn it off or on, it's not going to show up because the mask is blocking it. So from here, you can paint like with white or with gray and sort of kind of add back in little areas that you want. And this saves you from erasing it. So if you are really strict about your history and like keeping things, this is really nice. Sometimes you know, you make a little, like you decide not to want something and then later on you're like, oh no, wait, I want it, but that layer is now gone or that thing's now gone. So the mask can kind of save you because it will still be there, it's just hidden. So this is one way. Another way is very similar. So instead of normal, we're gonna go to soft light. If your program doesn't have soft light, overlay works just fine. My personal preference is just soft light. So here you can paint in colors, but I think black and white just works a little bit stronger. So here it's kind of the same thing. Usually it's a little bit too strong, but we'll see in a, I'll show you in a second. <laughs> the magic of just turning down the opacity like we did before. And it's very similar. It's basically the same thing, but instead of color picking, you're just using black and white and then emphasizing certain areas. So very quick, very simple, can very easily be done with a mouse. Obviously you might have not the same sort of pen pressure sensitivity, but you can still do this with a mouse and uh, take advantage of masks to sort of erase where you don't want things to go. There's of course a million different ways to do skin texture. This is just a very, very simple, quick one that I like to use sometimes. And again, if you're doing the 30 minute portrait challenge, this really does save you some time to do some really quick, even if it's a little bit messy skin texture, or you can see I put a little bit down here on his shoulder and neck. Um, or his facial hair, perhaps it's snowing in the background, or they have freckles. This is just a really quick and easy way to sort of get that effect on your portraits. And of course, you can always combine things if you like the black and white with soft light. If you like using the color picker, or if you just want to pick your own colors, you can sort of combine things, change around your brush settings, use a different brush. I do recommend trying out different brushes. Sometimes using softer brushes can really make for some nice soft looking skin. Sometimes the hard brush can be a little too hard. You can always blur the brush. You can always play around. So definitely experiment and see what you like with your portraits. And hopefully you found this helpful. If you'd like to find out more about me drawing these 30 minute portraits, I have I have step-by-step -step gifts and instructions and tips and everything that I've learned throughout the month of January on my Patreon page. I'll link that in the description down below. It also helps support this channel. So definitely check it out. If you'd like to see more tutorials, I have a massive playlist of all of my tutorials <laughs> linked in the description and in the card. So if you try this, let me know how it goes. And if you have any other methods or tips for doing portraits or texturing and stuff like that, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.